Hi, my name is Preneet and welcome to my channel Everyday Space. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the GSLV Mark III rocket and the history behind it. This is Israel's most powerful rocket. In my previous video, I discussed the basic history of Israel and the PSLV rocket in detail, so be sure to check that one out too. In this video, we're also going to be talking about why Israel chose a cryogenic engine for the third stage, what is the GSLV rocket, and what are the notable missions that it has completed. So let's get started. So now let's take a look at why Israel even initiated this GSLV series of rockets. Well, the main reason that Israel has started developing these series of rockets in 1990 is because of they realized a gap in their launch vehicles. The PSLV rocket, currently the most used rocket at that time, was not able to carry a sufficient payload to geostationary orbit. This was because the PSLV could not have the capacity to send a communication or weather satellite to geostationary orbit. That is why Israel developed these GSLV series, first consisting of the GSLV Mark 1 and 2, now the 3. So now let's take a history of the GSLV series and how the GSLV Mark 3 soon developed. So like I said before, the GSLV series was first initiated in 1990. While the Mark 1 and Mark 2 are flying, Israel already started on developing a Mark 3, a more powerful rocket. The Mark 3's first test flight was in 2014 when Israel launched a suborbital hop with the GSLV rocket, testing a re one of their re-entry systems. So later into the next launch that I performed was in 2017 when Israel first launched the first GSLV Mark 3 to orbit. This carried a GSAT and took it into a geostationary and geotransfer orbit. So after 2017, Israel has completed four more launches, with all of them being successes. This is the basic history and rundown of the major milestones that the GSLV Mark III has completed. So now let's take a look at the technical details and the staging of this powerful and amazing rocket. So now let's take a look at the first stage of the rocket. The first stage of the rocket are the S200 solid rocket boosters. These are the third largest solid rocket boosters in the world, which provide a combined thrust of 5,150 kN of thrust. These two solid rocket boosters will first ignite on the launch pad and will send the rocket to around 80 km before they detach and fall off and fall in the ocean. So the second stage of this JSLV Mark III rocket is another liquid propellant stage. It holds liquid fuel as its propellant instead of solid fuel like the side solid rocket boosters. This second stage, the core stage of this GSLV Mark III rocket has two Vikas engines at the bottom which provide a combined thrust of 1,600 kN. These will ignite at around 2 minutes and boost this rocket up to orbit leaving the final corrections for the third stage. Now let's take a look at the third and final stage of this GSLV Mark III rocket. The third stage is a cryogenic stage which uses liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen as propellant. This stage has a CE-20 rocket cryogenic engine as its power source. This CE-20 cryogenic engine provides 200 kilonewtons of thrust and is mainly used for final orbit orbital corrections and to place it in its proper trajectory towards its geosynchronous orbit. This um, stage can burn for almost six minutes without stopping to make sure the payload gets into its proper orbit. So why is Israel using a cryogenic engine? Why can't they use a normal engine? So, and what are the benefits of a cryogenic engine? So the main benefit of having a cryogenic engine is that the, your thrust to weight ratio is really high. A thrust to weight ratio is how much thrust you can get for let's just say 1 kg of propellant. If it's really high, that means your rock is very efficient and you can carry more payload instead of the saved propellant. So having a high thrust to weight ratio is really important 
and the cryogenic engine does. This is why most rockets use a cryogenic engine as their third stage. Because you don't want to carry a lot of propellant in your third stage when it's burning so long. This is why they use a cryogenic engine. But what is a cryogenic engine? A cryogenic engine is basically just any engine that burns cryogenic fuel. So then what is a cryogenic fuel? A cryogenic fuel is a fuel like liquid oxygen that is super chilled in its liquid state. This can be over negative 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So the liquid um, chilled fuel is very efficient when it's burned through a cryogenic engine. But it's really hard to make it because the pressure inside of the rocket tank has to be really high to make sure the heat does not escape. This is why ISRO has finally done it and has not used a cryogenic engine in a PSLV. But now they have indigenously created this rocket engine in their GSLV Mark III rocket. So now let's take a look at the notable missions that the GSLV Mark III has completed and will complete. Other than launching many other communication and weather satellites into geosynchronous and geostationary orbit, the GSLV Mark III rocket is also the same rocket that launched Israel's Chandrayaan-2 space probe to mid-orbit. After this, in the future, the Israel is planning to send the first Indian astronauts to space on board this GSLV Mark III rocket, part of the Gagayan mission. This will be the first time Indian astronauts have lifted into space from Indian soil. So thanks for watching and if you want to see more of my videos, please subscribe and like. Also, be sure to check out my previous video explaining the Israel's history and the PSLV rocket in detail. So thanks for watching.